we're going to jump right into um, dizziness <laughs> and how important it is to really pay attention to that situation. Let's say you don't even have hearing loss and you're getting dizzy. Now, dizziness or vertigo um, are two different things, and we'll, we'll, I'll sort this all out for you. But if you have dizziness, let's say you're just a little tipsy there, you know, you got to think, did I hit my head somewhere? You know, is there something in my ears? Because the ear is so small and so sensitive uh, that you really have to pay attention to that. Uh, this is a, a channel for hearing loss, but also we care about the health of the ear. So if you find yourself, you don't have hearing loss, but you, you, you're tipsy, you got to think, did you hit your head? Do you have any issues with your ears? Did you re just recover from an infection? Are you coming down with an infection? Whether it's, you know, sinuses and it's affecting your ears, or um, there is a condition called Meniere's, and that one's nasty, because <laughs> I've had to go through that one, Meniere's disease. Uh, so that affects your balance or causes vertigo. <coughs> vertigo is when you see the room spinning. That's vertigo. And dizziness is just, you know, you're just a little like the floor is not quite there or you're a little tipsy. So that's dizziness. And one or the other could be pretty chronic, could be pretty, pretty bad. So if you do have hearing loss and you're starting to come down with dizziness or vertigo, um, it's really important to uh, check with your doctor because uh, that could be anything, anything in the world. So it's hard to say, you know, what it could be. But dizziness or vertigo, you know, and hearing loss <laughs> all go together. It's like a salad. And so it's good to touch base with your doctor or audiologist or ENT. Usually the ENT will take a look at your ears. But um, you can go to your primary as well um, because they take care of the whole body. So they're going to check your ears, obviously. Um, but it's important to figure out, you know, is it your stomach? Is it this? Is it that? You know, you don't want to always blame your ears. Uh, but the ear is very sensitive, so you, you want to think. Even just a little bit of water in your ears will cause dizziness or terrible vertigo. Some people are that sensitive that the vertigo will be awful and they'll have to lay down on the floor. I've seen that. So, you know, you, you got to think about all the situations, but your doctor can also do that for you. <laughs> so, and don't drive when you're dizzy or you have vertigo, please. <laughs> so, have somebody else drive you to the doctor. Um, because, y you know, these conditions of vertigo or dizziness can be caused by a lot of things. So, you know, you don't want to guess, oh, it's just a little bit of this. It's all, oh, it's, it could be the flu, <laughs> for all you know. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, when someone has, if, it's, if you have Meniere's, you already know you have Meniere's and you have the vertigo, then you're going to just have to lie down. Um, in my book, as far as I know, there is no treatment or medication for, for Meniere's. Um, I just kind of lived through it carefully, uh, and, and it seemed to have burned out quite a bit, so it doesn't bother me anymore. And I take a lot of medication, so it could have been, it, my dizziness could be, you know, medications. Um, but when I ruled out, you know, medications, if I have the flu, my sinuses, and I ruled out all that, then, <laughs> then I call my ENT nurse. <laughs> I said, can you check my ears, please? So, you know, and, and she's always, you know, there to, to check things out. So... And she'll look, and, and thank goodness I haven't had any fluids or any infections lately. Uh, so, so all of that gets ruled out, or too much wax. Sometimes it can just be too much wax. 
and it in the year needs to be cleared out. Uh, so it's just those little things that can cause the dizziness, the vertigo, you know. At the beginning of my hearing loss, I had a lot of dizziness. And um, it was diagnosed, uh, they diagnosed me with um, Meniere's. So I was going to have to live with, you know, the situation. Uh, and Meniere's can destroy hearing. So <laughs> it's not a whole lot you can do. So, you know, water, infections, Meniere's. If you hit your head, uh, if you're a car accident, uh, so many things. We are complex. We are complex creatures. <laughs> but in terms of hearing loss, you know, you, you have to try to rule out some things, but it's good for your primary care doctor or your ENT doctor to take a look, make sure there's not, you know, some accumulation of something. Could be fluids, could be wax, could be, you know, anything. So it's just one of those things that's important to uh, take a look at and say, hmm, <laughs> something's going on. But if you have dizziness, vertigo, take a break, rest. Uh, and even that, just being exhausted, just not being, not just not sleeping well, can cause dizziness, um, can cause the body to, to react and, and be mad at you because you haven't slept well. <laughs> so all I'm saying is in this uh, is that the ears are very sensitive, very tiny, and it's good to get them checked if, if you're not quite feeling well. Um, there is a situation in which, you know, you could feel not quite dizzy, not quite, um, you know, with vertigo, but you're nauseous. So that's also important to, to add in, you know, if it's part of your uh, situation to, to mention to the doctor. I'm just nauseous. It's like, you know, I feel like I'm unsteady. So it, it's good to make a list of your situation so that the doctor can kind of, um, you know, go through the list of things that it could be or might not be at all. And certainly a car accident or hitting your head uh, could be one of those. So you want to be careful if you've had an accident to be watchful, to be very watchful. Um, because the brain is also <laughs> a sensitive uh, part of our body, of course. Uh, so, so all I'm saying is, what I want to say is that, you know, if you're a person without hearing loss and you start with dizziness and vertigo and just go to the doctor, check things out. If, if you're a person with hearing loss, and you've never had dizziness or vertigo, and you start with it, you know, it's important to get that checked because it could be the ears, um, and it could be, you know, some people are just, they just really have trouble in the spring, and they really have trouble in the fall because of allergies. So then it's, it's that struggle of fluids or infections. Um, I don't have infections anymore. I used to have a lot of infections when I had the ear molds for my hearing aids. Oh, it was awful. Or irritation in the skin. I had like allergies. So then my ears would be hot red because they would be so irritated from the molds. Um, so that could be another thing and hopefully nothing drains into the ear. Ah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's really, really good to keep up with your ear ear health <laughs> and make sure you know you you you're on top of it that you know sometimes it's really hard to know if it's fluids or an infection uh, because it, it doesn't always come with pain sometimes it comes with a lot of pain and um, 
sometimes I have, you know, a lot of pain in my ear, and it's really not my ear. <laughs> it's my jaw. This ligament in the jaw uh, gets irritated, and then it feels like it's my ear. <laughs> and then I have it checked, and the nurse at the ENT office says, no, mm, no you're okay, Lisa. Everything is good. Everything is, is clear. <laughs> so it's like, better check it than, you know, to be sorry later with a huge infection. I used to get them all the time, but now I'm I'm good, you know. Now it's it's spring, so I don't go out much. I don't go much. I don't go out much anyway. But <laughs> I don't go outdoors much because my allergies get really kicked up, uh, especially in the spring. But um, it just uh, it's just a, a a a safety rope that I'm throwing out there that if you are one of those people who gets a lot of dizziness and a lot of vertigo, to, to really follow up and see what kind of things can help you uh, reduce it. You know, if you, if you have a lot of wax and it, it's, you're just that kind of person who has a, a ton of wax, then it's going to be a routine for you to uh, really get that cleared out uh, every so often. Um, if you're a person who gets a lot of infections, from time to time you have to go in and get it cleared out or medications um, and get the ears checked in the end. Or, you know, sometimes people are, are just have that particular condition that your sinuses are always irritated. So you're, you're a person who's going to have a lot of fluids in your ears. And sometimes it needs to be uh, cleared out uh, or with medication helps dry that out. Um, I was one that my first cochlear implant, I remember, I just had a lot of fluids, and the ENT nurse was clearing it out, clearing it out, and then I had to go to Mexico all of a sudden. Not Mexico, Texas. <laughs> then I was in Texas for quite a while, and then I went, I had to go to Arizona, and then I was working there, and then I came back to uh, Milwaukee, and um, I was really feeling irritated. So I went to the ENT nurse, and she said, have you seen anybody lately? I said, no. I mean, for my ears? She said, yeah, it's really irritated in there and a lot of fluids, so I have to clear all that out. So she really had, we had several sessions in which she cleared it out and put some blue powder in there that helps reduce infection and all that kind of stuff, but she really had to work at it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it never came back, but it's one of those things that um, it's important to get the treatment you need uh, to make sure it doesn't get worse. So mine, I didn't, I didn't follow up on. I was in Texas, and then I went to Arizona, and I was really busy, and I didn't go to an ENT to get that ear checked. It's usually my left one. Um, and I didn't get it checked. And so by the time I got to my ENT nurse here in Milwaukee, it was a complete soup. <laughs> and it didn't look good. <laughs> uh, but and that's what happens when we don't follow up. <laughs> it just gets uh, <laughs> really bad. So let's, let's have a plan or make a plan for yourself to you know, get your ears checked when, you, especially when you go to your primary, they can usually alert you. You know, this doesn't look good, or you know, have you had any pain? You know, they can usually tell you if something doesn't look good, even if you have cochlear implants. They don't mind. I had to um, my primary that I've had for quite a few years. Um, she was like, "Oh, can I look at your ears? I see you have cochlear implants." I said, "Yeah, yeah." My ear looks like just anybody else's, so. <laughs> so I think I was one of her first patients with cochlear implants, um, but she's used to it now, and you know, just looks at my ears just like she would in any exam. Um, and my sinuses are always drippy, so she takes a look to make sure there's no fluids in there, no infection, um, no irritation, so she knows the importance of you know, when you have cochlear implants, it's a really bad idea to have infections because they can spread right up to the brain. We have an open 
area in which infections can go up to the brain. So we really need to be careful, those of us with cochlear implants. So that's a, a, a really uh, a warning. I don't want you to panic, especially there's no reason to panic. But to keep that ear or ears healthy, uh, because with cochlear implants, we don't want infections. We really don't. So, you know, that's why it's important for your primary to check in there, make sure everything is dry and no infection. And then when you go to your ENT, you know, I see my ideologist, and if she sees anything suspicious, she lets the nurse in the ENT department know, and uh, she'll, she'll come in and, and she'll check my ears and say, hey, Lisa, we need to check this a little bit more, and I'll go into her office but uh, we never want infections in our ears and do not attend to it because it could spread to the brain. So that doesn't sound fun, but <laughs> it's a sense of responsibility too. If you have a lot of fluids, you, you gotta watch it. So anyway, that's what I had for today. Dizziness, vertigo, and to get some rest, to call your primary. Um, and have her check things over or him and see if you need to go see an ENT uh, to, to make sure there's no infections, to make sure there's no fluids sitting there, uh, um, <laughs> and uh, to make sure that, you know, there's treatment for, for whatever you need. You know, Meniere's doesn't have any treatment, but other things do. So, you know, and I, I feel sorry for those of us <laughs> with Meniere's because it can happen at any time, you know. Some of us with Meniere's have it really, really bad. And so, you know, it's not advisable to ride a bike or drive a car uh, because, you know, we, we can come down with vertigo or dizziness at any given time. So it's problematic. <coughs> now, my... Meniere's has really burned itself out, so I don't have that anymore. So if I'm dizzy or have vertigo, then I know it's something else. I know it's something else, whether it's my meds or whether it's my health or whether it's, you know, one of my ears. So I usually get it checked out. But anyway, uh, I don't want to repeat myself over and over. <laughs> but I do want to say this, and this has to do with the channel in general. You all know that I promote, you know, that you advocate, that you speak up for yourself and your needs. You know, this one member on the channel, uh, she or he, uh, you know, uh, wrote a letter, wrote a letter to the management and stated the things that they needed in their apartment. And according to the ADA, she mentioned, you know, um, law in there, so it was all neat and, and reasoned out, uh, and she asked if they could do any kind of accommodations so that the apartment would be easier for this person to use, and she was absolutely tickled and shocked when they came back and said, yes, we will do that for you, <laughs> so <laughs> yes. And this, this is what this channel is about, you know, for you to advocate for yourself when, when you have a need. And I am tickled to death this member um, is, is going to hopefully soon uh, they will be coming into our apartment and making uh, or his apartment to get these uh, renovations done so that the apartment is easier for them to, to use. And, and the member was, was very correct in saying, you know, even if I move on, then at least it, there's accommodations for the next person. And that is, that is awesome. And that's one of the reasons, one of the big reasons why this channel and my other channel exist. Uh, the other channel is called World Wheelchair Warriors, and it's for resources for people with wheelchairs. But... Um, that's why these two channels exist, is because to really promote, you know, self-care, really to promote, you know, self-advocacy and education uh, to others, and for you to be curious 
uh, and educate yourself constantly about your condition, your hearing condition, and, and be a smart whip <laughs> when it comes to hearing loss and your needs. So I'm grateful that you came and spent a few minutes with me here on a Thursday for the hearing loss chat, and I hope to see you very soon. <laughs>